But we might as well have a look at it, a couple of different types of submasters. So for example, uh, different look types here. If I just pull down this list, we've got four different options in this drop down list for this version of software. Uh, additive, which means HTP or uh, highest takes precedence. So uh, if you've got two levels and uh, one's been controlled by one submaster or queue list and you fade up this one, it has the same queue. Whichever one has the highest level will then be in control. Um, assertive, which is uh, kind of interesting, and it means it's latest takes precedence. So if I change all of these, why don't I just change all of these here to a LTP um, uh, submaster. So with our submasters, as far as they're concerned, where they don't overlap, they work exactly as you'd expect. Where they do overlap, have a look at what's happening with this submaster. As I fade it up, it's actually fading down the levels f that are overlapping and fading up the other levels so that when I actually get it to full, they will all reach that level of 44% that I set for all of them. Okay, so that's how latest takes precedence types of things work. I'll fade it out again and the precedence is being returned back to the um, the previous submaster that I faded up before. So that's that's how latest takes precedence works. Exclusive is another thing again. Now what an exclusive submaster does, what I'll do, I'll let's record an exclusive submaster. So I'll take these guys out and we'll take channel one, pop him at full and we're going to record him as uh, look number 10. All right, I'll release him. Now at the moment, look number 10 is just your um, absolutely standard uh, high stacks precedence submaster. If I change this to exclusive, all right, what will happen is when I fade up these, this other submaster that also happens to have channel one, this exclusive submaster says, no, 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 mate, I'm in charge. You're staying at zero. And so it gives the, um, the submaster exclusive control over that particular channel. It does this by actually um, manipulating the priorities of the various different submasters. So an exclusive submaster is a submaster that is more important than any other submaster if you're just running in the defaults. And you can set the priority of the exclusive submaster under um, a hardware setup, I think it is. So that's what exclusive does. Now, finally, we have um, inhibitive. Inhibitive is a very useful little feature. Okay, so let's say, for example, all of your front of house lights are here on 35 to 51, all right? So let's pop them at full. Let's record them as the next look, which is look 11. Okay. And I'll just release them so they go away again. Now, uh, here they are. They're on look 11, just like uh, they were uh, in a normal high stakes precedence fader. If I change this to an inhibitive um, uh, submaster, what it does is it takes control of those lights and makes this submaster work like a grandmaster. So while it's at full, it will allow other things to do things to those channels. When it's not at full, it takes control, but it does rely on the priority of the, um, the submaster. So let me just change the priority of it. I'm going to just right click on our toolbar up here and I'm just going to make it show me the priority of different things. Okay, I'm going to change this priority to 20. All right, so now when I fade this out, you can see that everything that I've actually recorded in that submaster is now actually controlled and faded out. But everything else that isn't recorded in there is just fine. Okay, now as I fade everything out, 
those red boxes that indicate the fact that they've been inhibited disappear. All right. So our theta number 11 becomes an inhibit master. Very, very useful if you're doing a uh, proscenium arch style of show and uh, or any kind of show where you need to be able to grab all of those lights and just take them out now. So on a proscenium art show where you do a curtain call, you might put all of your front of house lighting onto an inhibit master so that as they bounce the curtain in and out at the end of the show for the bows, you can just fade out all of the lights that make the curtain look ugly and um, uh, allow that to go to darkness. The curtain goes in, curtain goes out, bring back the front of house and everyone looks normal again. So that's uh, what an inhibitive submaster is there for. You can also use inhibitive submasters for things like effects and things like that. So that, for example, uh, you might put an inhibit master over the channels running a particular effect so that, as before, when you triggered an effect via our, um, our uh, various different methods of triggering one, you might then also have a submaster that controls the level of the intensity for those channels in that effect. Very useful.